preferred nickname? I'm going with Pit Boss, but is there any other nickname that you prefer? No, I I liked I liked the Boss Hog. I like Pit Boss. I called my wife Mama Hog. She hated it. You know, I don't know why, but so that's out. Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 11th edition of Always College Football. We appreciate you being with us from wherever it is that you're consuming the content, whether that's on the ESPN YouTube channel, on Apple Podcast, or if you're here with us on Spotify, please like, rate, and subscribe. It helps us out. It helps out the show. He's Mark Kubiak. I'm Greg McElroy. Thanks again for being with us. We have a great game plan for you today. We have the Pit Boss, also known as Sam Pittman, the head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. He will join us here on Always College Football. Talk about what 2022 might look like after a breakthrough season that was in 2021. And we're going to give you a couple of interesting news and notes and how they might be affecting your favorite team. And then finally, we're going to tell you about a new show coming up here brought to you by Omaha Productions that might be very fun to watch if you're a fan of the Florida Gators. So without much further ado, let's bring him on. He is the head hog, the pit boss, you name it. He's everybody's favorite, that's for sure. He's Sam Pittman of the Arkansas Razorbacks. All right, we're joined now by, I don't is it the head hog? Is it the pit boss? I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the nickname needs to be, Coach. What's going on? Man, I'm doing great. I don't know what it is. As long as it ain't got cuss words in it, I'm happy with whatever they call me. <laughs> Depends on how good practice is. Then it could be, you know, laden with cuss words. But we'll avoid it oh, here, man. knowing that this is a cleed podcast. We appreciate the time, man. Um, man. We have been so proud of what you've accomplished the last couple of years. You stepped into a position, never having been a head coach before, and look at how the team has gravitated towards your leadership you know, how would you say things have gone over the last couple of years to get you to this point? Yeah, incredible. It's all about, you know, obviously the players, they, you know, they have to have buy in. They wanted somebody to, you know, to care about them and not, you know, when you talk about things like that, you, you know, it sounds like the other coach didn't I I don't know what happened with the other with coach Morris that's that's not my concern but so I'm not talking anything negative but our kids wanted you know someone who cared about them somebody who was um, you know confident in their abilities I said to first when I walked in the door you didn't choose me but I chose you and and uh, and I'm not trying to run anybody out of here. I'm also not trying to keep anybody. I want somebody <laughs> who wants to be on the program, wants to be proud to be a Razorback. But it all started, honestly, with the uh, hiring of coaches that believed in the same thing I did. Uh, we're all on the same page. Uh, you know, we have – a wonderful staff meetings, uh, separate uh, O and D and special teams every day, and just trying to get better and trying to. We, here's the one thing I understand: my assistant coaches and my players want to win every bit as bad as I do, and I haven't always worked for, you know, a long time ago. Not Kirby. Kirby understood it, but worked for guys that felt like they wanted to win worse than I did as an assistant, and uh, I know that's not true with our staff. Well, that's great to hear. And we'll get into your coordinators and your staff in a minute. Uh, but sometimes, you know, head coaches, they have a tendency to kind of cater the practice to their favorite position group. Um, <laughs> it's no secret who your favorite position group is, the offensive line. So have you found yourself doing maybe a little bit more inside run, a little bit more half line run than your average coaching staff? Well, I believe in it, you know, so you're, you're, the way you said it makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> I believe in physicality and big people and, and running the football and stopping the run. Uh, so probably, but I, I, <laughs> I think that's just probably how I was raised, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we did the same thing over at Georgia. That was kind of the, the, the benchmark of, of the Bulldogs and, and, uh, certainly, that's what I believe in. So it's real easy, but yeah, they're pretty physical practices, you know, <laughs> do you ever do like four offensive linemen against one defensive lineman just to send a message <laughs> or anything? Because I felt like sometimes, and you came from the Kirby tree and you know, this, like we used to do half line pass and there would be like yeah. five or six defensive backs working against two wide receivers. And I just never understood how that worked out. <laughs> 
Man, you got a good memory. I remember that too. And I was going, I, I don't, but I didn't say a word, you know, I'd be like, <laughs> that look, you know, that doesn't look fair, you know. Right. Uh, now uh, we pretty much try to keep it fair on both sides of the ball. Same, same numbers on, you know, we try to make it where, where we can block them. You know, we don't hardly have an extra hat out there, whether it be offense or defense, but it's been a lot of fun. We know we're four days in it and been a lot of fun. Yeah, and I know, look, this is kind of the first year, Coach, because I remember doing you guys the second week of last season, and you flat out told us, you're so honest and transparent, it's so refreshing. You flat out told us, like, hey, man, I, I mean, I think we're all right. We play like we did in the first half. We're going to get our butts beat. We play like we did in the second half against Rice. We're going to kick some people's butts. Like, I, we'll see. <laughs> it was, um, it was, it was you know, weird because you were trying to figure it out, and we were too, and, and it's like you didn't even really know what you had at that point. Well, I know, I'll be honest with you. I, you're so nervous going into every game. Did I cover this? Did I cover that? You know, we talk to our kids about anxiety and, you know, taking the I hope away and getting to the I know. Well, the only way you can do that is cover everything and have confidence, you know, because I've covered everything. I remember as an old line coach, I'd be going, oh, man, I hope they don't move a lot today or I hope they don't twist game us a whole lot. You know, well, hell, that's a shame on me. That's that's my fault, you know. I got to take that hope into no but but uh no i i don't know what we have i do know this that we've got our quarterback back and our coordinators back and our old line back and uh our defense runs to the they play hard i mean they play hard that's i'm proud of i'm proud of the way our kids play we play hard so are we going to be better than we were last year? I don't know, but I, we're going to have a good football team. I'll say that. It does feel like this year, though, Coach, you were such an unknown last year, and then the Texas game, we were there. We were fortunate to be there. It was like a coming out party. It was like mm -hmm. years and years of frustration were just – everything came out of the Razorback faithful that night. And you could just feel the energy in the stadium pregame. And you could just tell after a series or two, it's like, oh boy, Arkansas will not be stopped tonight. So uh, I guess, how do you harness what was the release of last year in breaking through and now being able to replicate it, knowing there are some expectations? Well, we're not number one. So the thing about um, being a blue collar, hardworking I got a chip on my shoulder because nobody respects me from the head coach down. Uh, the thing about it, I guess until you get preseason ranked number one, you always have uh, uh, headlines or you always have material uh, where you're not ranked or you're ranked lower than three or four teams you beat the year before, whatever it is. And you always have that. Uh, we have, you know, we're the underdog. We're not respected. That's what we thrive on. That's what I do as a head coach as well. And and uh, so it's pretty easy. But I guess once you get to number one, you you know, you got a little problem at that point. I don't know how you do it. I guess then that'd be Coach Saban's rat poison. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess if we ever did get to the point where the Hogs were preseason number one, Coach, do you, like, take away their computers and their tablets to make sure they read no press Amen. clippings? Like, what do you do? <laughs> Well, first of all, if I was behind closed doors, I'd say, hell yeah. But then, <laughs> then I'd, I'd have to be somebody else after that. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, your trademark, yes, sir, might have been appropriate uh, if you got that number one ranking next to your name. And shoot, Amen. given the way you guys are going, I don't think anyone would bet against that. Coach, with your coordinators, you referenced the continuity. Um, you have two coordinators that could very easily be head coaches. Uh, I think Kendall Bryles, I know he's had his opportunities. Uh, Barry Odo's been a head coach in the league. He he now uh, he's going to be picky, and he's been outspoken about that. He's going to be picky because he loves his situation so much. So how are you able to retain those guys knowing that they have chances every year to go run their own program? Well, first of all, they know I want them to get a head coaching job. I do. I, w I want them to get a, a good one. Now, I, you know, I want them to get a good head coaching job, and they know I'd help them. Uh, as much as possible they know i love them I and mean, i love the guys they're they're wonderful men wonderful family men uh so i think that's probably how you retain guys you know you you talk to them you treat them like grown men um uh, you know you bounce things off of them uh you res you when they talk you listen uh, i can't be the only talker in a building you know i, I I think a great head coach becomes the best listener, not only to the to the coaches, but to the to the team, you know. And uh, so I think that's kind of how 
how we're keeping them. Um, but I do want to say this: if Barry came in and said I got a head coaching job at such and such, and I want to, I'd be the happiest guy in the in the whole room uh, in the whole state for him. And I'd do the same for Kendall. But as long as we have them, I think continuity. I've seen too many coaches lose their job because they weren't able to replace somebody. Uh, you know, I would coach for 30 something years. So I know a whole lot of people and I, I don't think I have a whole lot of enemies. So if I, you know, if I do lose some of the guys, um, hopefully I'll, I'll have enough, uh, respect out there where someone would want to come and, and work for us. But I hope that day's a long time down the road, not, not negatively towards them getting a job, <laughs> but I hope they don't find one that they like better not that better than here for a while. Well, you you keep beating up on folks, you're going to make some enemies. Uh, that ain't going to last long. You can't be everybody's friend, man. I tell you what. Uh, about your roster, man, and I think all of us are collectively excited about what Traylon's going to do for the Tennessee Titans and, yeah. and knowing just how you moved him around and did so many different things to feature him in favorable matchups. You know, how's that competition kind of playing out on the perimeter? Because that's obviously a fairly significant void that you have to fill. Well, you know me. I just say it like I feel it. I, I, I think that's the most improved group in four days that we've had on our football team. Um, we're catching uh, contested passes. Uh, we're running good routes. Uh, you know, Keetron Jackson is now in his third year with us, and, and uh, Warren Thompson is having just a phenomenal four-day camp. Matt Landers is the real deal. I mean, he can fly. He's been the real deal for uh, like seven Jake. years, I feel like. Like, I remember hearing about yeah, him in Georgia, right? It's time. No it's time for Landers. Now he's, now he's big. Uh, he's fast. I think he, I think we suit him the way we coach. I think we suit him uh, well. Uh, obviously, it helped that we, that we knew him. Uh, and then Jaden Hazelwood, over four days, has – he was that guy we thought he would be uh, out of high school. So those those guys probably stick out. Jaden Wilson again is really having a, uh, another one that's having a good camp. But uh, and to be honest with you, I, I like the 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 new ones we've got. We have we had three new freshmen come in. I don't know how much each one will help us. They will certainly will in the future. Uh, but I like the Satagna kid. You know Isaiah Satagna out of out of Fayetteville High. Um, could help us in punt and kickoff returns as well, but very, very skilled athlete, certainly fast. No, it's and I, I think that that group, you know, is shoot. I mean, with KJ coming along, and I, I, Hazelwood was a decorated yeah. blue chip guy. Landers, he's had so many bright moments, albeit I feel like it's every spring. But Landers has always been a guy we've talked about with potential. So I hope here late in his career, the light goes on for him. So I'm excited to see what happens with that group. How's the chemistry coming along with with KJ Jefferson? Because you and I have talked about this. KJ's a guy that, you know, is is very thoughtful, very courteous, but, you know, maybe hasn't always been just that super alpha. Now that he's played at a high level for a long period of time and is a big reason why y'all have had success, are you seeing a different KJ this year as far as how he's carrying himself day in and day out with his confidence, knowing that the team's going to thrive on his success? Oh, yeah. I think, I think you can tell – leadership by the way others look at him and by the way others treat the guy uh, our team knows he's he's our guy and i'm i don't mean they know it now i mean you know i haven't said one time hey stay away from the quarterback you know you know how that is right. they they're, they're way away from him but he has he's comfortable uh, i'm not talking about competitive comfortable he, he's competitive now but he's comfortable uh being the leader of the football team and more probably more important than anything the team's comfortable with him and they 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 show him the respect that certainly he's earned and it this this success that he's had hasn't gone to his head it hadn't changed in one bit he understands the way he got it was hard work and 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 that means in the film room off the field and certainly on the field uh, you know that year one to year two as a quarterback, man, you just feel so different. I know I did. I know most guys do. It's like, yeah. I know what I can get away with. I know what I can't get away with. Let's go out there and get it done. So I'm excited to see him blossom this year. Another position group. And I, I I'm, we're not going to go through every, every <laughs> position group on the roster. <laughs> go ahead, coach. I'm but I think this, I think this, I think you changed 
and got better because the people around you believed in you and it brought an air of confidence that you're the guy. Sure. And I don't think certain people, I don't think it puts pressure on. I think certain people, they thrive on that just as I believe you did. And, uh, you know, there, there is pressure, but there's also a guy can take it to another level, in my opinion, by the way his coaches and his teammates feel about him. And he has that feeling. And then he's going to go out there and go, hey, I love these guys right here. And I'm going to make damn sure that they believe in me after this season as well. And I think you had that as a player. And I think KJ has that as well. Well, I think your best friend as a quarterback is one, a great supporting cast, and two, confidence. And I think if you don't have mm-hmm. one or the other, you're yeah. in serious jeopardy. Well, we, we're glad to know that that he's taking the next step and that the guys are rallying to him. I know he's a great kid, so we're all rooting for him. Another position group, though, that I want to ask you about is that defensive front. A couple new faces up there. But you've mentioned a couple guys that we've had our eye on now for a while. you got Isaiah Nichols, who's having to fill a massive void or Ridgeway in the middle. You lose a couple other guys there that were transfers last year and Trey Williams and Mar- Marcel Utzi. Now it, it feels like you're going back to the portal, relying on guys that have played at a high level, and yet you have some young guys coming along. So you know, how do you, would you like to see that rotation work out for y'all as you get into the first part of this season? Well, you know, a lot of our guys have been playing ball – uh, you know, we, 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 like everybody, we play a lot of D line in right. each game, you know? And, and so, you know, Jashad Stewart and Eric Gregory and, and Isaiah Nichols and Zach Williams, they played, you know, now going into at least their third year of ball for us. They're stronger, they're better. Uh, you know, they understand, they don't have the anxiety. They know what to do. Bringing in Landon Jackson, uh, has, has helped us here in the, in the, in the fall camp, bringing in Terry Hampton has helped us in the fall camp and bringing in, uh, Jordan Dominic has helped us in the fall camp. Uh, those three guys will definitely be in our two deep along with cam ball. Uh, so those three guys have helped us. Uh, I believe that, you know, our biggest need, uh, in my opinion was the ability to put 40 linemen on the field. Uh, uh, our, our next biggest need was getting a sure enough pass rusher out of either it be, you know, um, bringing Drew Sanders or Poole or whoever it may be, or can we find a defensive end that can rush the passer one-on-one and, and win? And uh, I think we're closer. I know we are. Uh, and then the, what correlates with that is do we have any corners that can cover man-to-man? Yeah. And because uh, if you can't cover man in this league, uh, the quarterback's going to be back there for a while. And uh, at least you got to bring five. Uh, or you can be, you know, like the elite te- teams in the league and they, they can get home with four man rush, you know. So, uh, but I think that we're going to be deeper than we were last year. Um, and we sure have have done a good job in the first four days. Yeah, that's great to hear because I know that that was a group that that you want to come on and, and I know you're excited about it. So we asked one kind of fun gotcha question at the end. Right. I actually, for you, because of how much fun you are, I have two for you, all right? Oh, Preferred great. nickname. I'm going with Pit Boss, but are we? is there any other nickname that you prefer? No, I I like I like the boss hog. I like pit boss. Either one of them, I, I do. I mean, I told my I called my wife Mama Hog. She hated it. You know, I don't know why, but but so that's out. But pit pit boss and but pit boss is kind of what I've been called for a long time because the old line. Yeah, you know, right. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I like I like both those. All right, I can live with that. And then finally, uh, your old boss at Arkansas way back in the day was Brett Bielema. Yeah. If you were playing wide receiver and Brett Bielema was playing corner, could you get open? We'd lose. We would both lose. <laughs> but could I get open? I don't I don't think so. You know, he's long and got, you know, big hands. Um I don't know. I haven't seen him for a while. So it might be a hell of a match, but right now I'd have to probably give it to him, you know, because he's 
He's uh, younger than I am. Yeah, but you've lost a couple pounds, Coach, quite a few. So yeah. you've got some quickness now. Don't tell yourself short. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'd probably have to give it to him. You know, maybe if he flipped, I could get over. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, we can we can maybe I'll set that thing up. Let's get let's get Illinois down in Fayetteville or vice versa, and we'll figure something out. It sounds good, Coach. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. All right, man. We so appreciate it. Have a great rest of the fall camp. We look forward to visiting again soon and seeing you in the fall. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Coach. What a great visit with head coach Sam Pittman. It's always nice to visit with him and also interesting to look ahead to see what the Arkansas Razorbacks might be here in 2022. All right. Let's get to some news and notes. All right. Staying in the SEC West, the Alabama Crimson Tide and head coach Nick Saban announced yesterday that JoJo Earl, their slot receiver, their talented return man, get him the ball in space, let him work. A guy that was poised to have a massive breakout season, he's going to be sidelined for six to eight weeks with a Jones fracture. This is significant because we know that Alabama's wide receiver core, not that they're depleted by any stretch, but in some ways they are unproven. And JoJo Earl was going to fill a void there in the slot that was once occupied by Jalen Waddell to just get him the ball any way you can and allow him to do work in space. So him being absent could be a significant loss for the Crimson Tide who are going to be relying on some inexperienced explosive playmakers at wide receiver they still have Burton they still have Harrell they still have young players like Brooks they still have plenty of pieces to rely on but this is a significant setback for a guy that Nick Saban said was having a heck of a spring a heck of a summer and so far up to this point was having one heck of a fall camp also an injury has hit the Florida State offensive line. We know that that's been a group that has been much maligned for the better part of the last decade, and this will not help things. Caden Lyles is going to be out for the entire 2022 season. He's a transfer from Wisconsin. He was battling to become the starting center for the Florida State Seminoles. As far as their depth is concerned, it's improved, but is it yet to the point in which it can be a top group in the ACC, probably not. However, the best thing to make offensive line play better is constant competition. And being without a center that was highly regarded coming down from Wisconsin is something that will be uh, a, a big loss for the most part for Florida State. And then finally, this is a little bonus. This is newsy in our world because we obviously work with Omaha Productions. They... <laughs> They're our parent company, and thanks to Peyton, thanks to Eli, thanks to everybody associated with Omaha Productions, so we're grateful for them. But they are launching season two of Eli's Places, and because we are college football fans, why wouldn't they start it with one of the best college football quarterbacks here in this generation? It's Tim Tebow, and who can forget this moment when Tim took to the podium and made this speech? This plaque commemorates the promise, the speech you gave after the 3-0 Gators suffered their one and only loss in 2008. I'm sorry. Um, extremely sorry. You know, we were hoping for an undefeated season. That was my goal. Something the floor's never done here. But I promise you one thing. A lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season. And you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season. You'll you never, never see, see a, a team, team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. All right, there it was. And of course, as we all know, Florida went on to win the national championship there in 2008. And Tim didn't lose a game from the time he made that speech until the time he played us in the 2009 SEC Championship game. So good on you. Good on Eli. Look forward to seeing season two premiere of Eli's Places on ESPN+. Plus. For all of us here at Always College Football, thanks for being with us. It's been a great show today. Thanks to Sam Pittman for the visit. It was great to visit with him. think they have a chance to do some special things here in 2022, at least build on what they established last year, the foundation that they established in 2021. is something that definitely feels like they are poised to make a leap here in the coming years. So much fun to interact with you at always CFB on Instagram and Twitter. We also appreciate you hitting us up in the comments on ESPN's YouTube channel. Please like, rate, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify or on ESPN's YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. It helps out the show. For all of us here at Always College Football, he's Mark Kubiak. I'm Greg McElroy. Hope you have a wonderful day. And remember, it's Always College Football. 
Hey guys, it's Greg McElroy. Thanks for watching Always College Football. Make sure you like, rate, and subscribe to ESPN's YouTube channel and wherever you listen to your podcasts.